Hey, you're back again. Good for you. So this is uh, video number three then. And, you know, having read this chapter already, you know that one of its primary concerns is the spiritual well-being of, of today's youth. You know, one thing that's sort of been an unfortunate rite of passage over the years is uh, talking about how horrible the kids of today are, right? Most of us have experienced this in some form uh, over the course of our life. Me personally, being born in 1983, uh, I'm a millennial, and I'll tell you, if, if you're in a room full of older generations and you say the word millennial, you can just hear the, the groans reverberating from the front of the auditorium to the back. It's just like, oh, you millennials, you're just the worst. You take no responsibility and you are lazy. And the list goes on and on and on. Uh, but of course, the reason that they're doing that is because when they were coming of age, they had older generations do the same thing with them. So, uh, you know, it, it's unfortunate, but this persists with us. Uh, but anyway, we're talking about today's youth, not mine, which is getting further and further and further in the rearview mirror. But, you know, as you can guess, one of my least favorite phrases that I ever hear is, ugh, kids today. Well, let me tell you something about kids today. They are the way they are, the same reason that past generations were the way they were. They're a product of the environment that they grew up and developed in. So, you know, when we think about these kids today, <laughs> we got to realize that, you know, if they were born in the 1920s, they would have fought bravely in World War II. If they were born in the 1930s, I have absolutely no doubt that they would have flown to the moon and back successfully. And so we have to realize this and remember that we shouldn't just look down on kids today just because they are kids today. <laughs> You know, one thing I can tell you is that the students I have in my class, they're very honest with themselves. You know, if they don't think that the Christian church is based in reality, they're not going to waste their time with it. And can you blame them? But of course, they get this idea from our secular science curriculum, which of course teaches that everything got here by chance as a result of no creator, no designer, uh, ultimately no purpose, you know, as, is it any wonder that so many feel lost and depressed and confused all the time? But, uh, of course, Christianity is based in reality. So we need to stop just feeling sad about what's going on with the youth leaving the church. We need to stop just feeling angry about what's happening in our world. We need to resist the urge to run into our churches, close the doors behind us, and say, God, take me home before things get worse. No, this is the time for us to burst open those doors, run outside, and say, hey, everybody, this stuff is for real. Um, this is not a battle for pride or prestige. This is a battle for eternal souls of human beings. It's worth fighting for. So let's go.